Hello, and welcome to another second grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Miss Beckett, and in today's lesson, we are going to practice estimating and finding the sums and differences of two-digit numbers. As you follow along today, think about how you are able to use an efficient strategy to help you solve problems. We will have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. In today's lesson, we invite you to continue to work on your portrait of a graduate skills as you listen closely to the different strategies shared and see what connections you can make to your own ideas. As a creative and critical thinker, it will be helpful for you to see how you can think about problems in new and different ways. For today's lesson, you will need some paper and a pencil. I will give you a few seconds to go get those things now. Welcome back, let's get started. We will get started with a counting warm up. We are going to count by tens off the decade starting at 13. I'll help you get started. Then you can keep counting as you see the numbers appear. We'll stop when we get to 203. And don't forget, we'll continue by counting backwards too. You'll see the numbers flash to help you keep track of where we are. Are you ready? Count with me, 13, 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, 103, 113, 123, 133, 143, 153, 163, 173, 183, 193, 203. Let's count backwards. 203, 193, 183, 173, 163, 153, 143, 133, 123, 113, 103, 93, 83, 73, 63, 53, 43, 33, 23, 13. Wow, nice job counting with me by tens off the decade. What patterns do you notice when you look at the numbers we counted? Take a moment to record any patterns you see on your paper. Let's share some of the patterns that appear when we count by tens starting at 13. As we read the chart we created from left to right, maybe you noticed each number on the right is 10 more than the number on the left in the same row. This makes sense since we are counting by tens. Looking at all the numbers, maybe you notice the number three appears and repeats in the ones place of every number. So we are going to see it here going down the columns, but also on all the numbers in the rows too. Why does this happen? We are going up by tens, so the ones place isn't changing. You may have noticed as you follow the numbers down the column that they increase by 50 or five tens. 53 and 50 more equals 103. 103 plus 50 equals 153. 153 plus 50 equals 203. You also might have noticed every other number in the column has the same tens and ones digit. It is just 100 more. 
For example, if we look at 73 and 173, they both have seven tens and three ones. The only thing that changed was 173 has 100. So it's 100 more than 73. We will continue today's lesson with a number talk. We will go through a few problems. As we go through these, think about how you can use what you learned from the previous problem to help you with the next one. Here's our first number sentence, 18 plus five. Think about how you might solve this. If you've thought about one way to solve it, try and think of another strategy to solve it. I bet you came up with a great strategy to solve 18 plus five. I am going to put some 10 frames on the screen to represent this problem. How can we use these 10 frames to figure out 18 plus five? Maybe you filled the second 10 frame to make another 10. It's easier to figure out 20 plus three then 18 plus five. Sometimes second graders like to use number lines to represent their strategy. If we were to use a number line, what jumps could you make? Maybe you started with 18 and added a jump of two to get to the friendly number 20 and then a jump of three more makes 23. Look at both the 10 frames and the number line. What is the same and what is different? Maybe you notice they both have the same strategy but use different tools to represent it. One used 10 frames, and the other used a number line. They are the same strategy because in the tens frame example, we move two dots over from the five to the 18 to get a friendly number. The same thing happened on the number line. We added a jump of two to get to 20 and then added a jump of three to make 23. Let's see what this making 10 strategy would look like with number sentences. I know that the five can be broken into a two and three. We started with 18 and added two more because that got us to the friendly number 20. And then we needed three more left from the five to make 23. Mathematicians can use different tools to represent their math thinking and strategies. We used a make 10 strategy to solve this problem and we showed this strategy in three different ways with 10 frames, a number line, and with number sentences. We just looked at how we could use a making 10 strategy to solve 18 plus five. How might that help you solve 18 plus 15? I will give you some time to solve it using a strategy in your head or using your paper and pencil. I bet you came up with a great strategy. I'm going to share one student's strategy, but remember, it's okay if you solved it differently than this second grader. Mathematicians can solve problems in many different ways. Maybe you thought about 18 being close to the friendly number 20. It is only two away. I know getting to the next friendly number makes it easier to add the numbers. If I had 18 and added two from the 15, that would give me 20. Then I have 13 left and I know 20 and 13 equals 33. What equations would match what we just did? 
I started with 18 plus 2 to get me to 20. Then I had 20 and added 13 more. And that equals 33. You've been practicing your portrait of a graduate critical and creative thinking skills by creating new solutions and strategies for these math problems. Let's continue to practice our portrait of a graduate skills with one more problem. I will give you some time to solve 18 plus 34 mentally in your head or on your paper. Remember, thinking about a strategy and being able to explain it is just as important as getting the answer. We will come back together and share our strategies in a minute. Let's come back together and do a strategy share. I'm going to show you some strategies I saw some second graders using for this problem. As you're listening to these strategies, see if they make sense to you and think about how they're the same and different from how you solved it. Like in the previous equations we solved, we used a make 10 strategy to get to the friendly number. 34 can be split into two and 32. Then we add two to the 18 to make 20 and there are 32 left from the 34. 20 plus 32 equals 52. It's like our coral count from the beginning of the lesson. If we have 32 and add two tens, we have 42, then 52. Maybe you use the number line as a tool to show your strategy. If we were to use a number line, what jumps could you make? There are many different ways to make jumps on the number line for this problem. I saw a second grader make jumps like this. They started at 34 and added 10 from the 18 to get 44. Then they added six more. Why do you think the student added six more? To get to the next friendly number, 50. Then there were two more left from the 18. So 50 and two more is 52. Where do you see the 34 in this student's strategy? That's it, the number they started with, the number line. Where do you see the 18? The numbers that were added or the value of the jumps is the 18. Maybe you used a different strategy and split both numbers into tens and ones and added the tens first and the ones next and then added the totals together. If we split 18 into tens and ones, we have 10 and eight. If we split 34 into tens and ones, we have 30 and four. We can add the tens first, 10 plus 30 to get 40 then we can add the ones eight and four to get 12. 40 plus 12 equals 52. These are some great second grade strategies. What is the same and different between these three strategies? Wow, what great noticings. Today's lesson was a review of how we can use a strategy to find the sums and differences of two digit numbers. Reflect on your progress towards our learning goals by selecting which emoji best matches how you're feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand but need more practice and the confused emoji if you feel like you have more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there is something new you learned like a new strategy that you don't want to forget and try next time. Or maybe there's something we talked about today that you still have questions about. Take a minute to record your reflections on today's lesson and save them for the next time you're able to check in with your teacher.
Mathematicians are creative and critical thinkers, always looking for connections and new ways to solve problems. What new connections did you make today? Did you challenge yourself to try a new strategy? Thank you for joining me for today's second grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Miss Beckett and can't wait to do math with you again tomorrow. Have a great day and keep on counting.